Kakadosh is the Ben Ishchai Parashat Tazria Tahara. If you realize also here, the Ben Ishchai writes Taharot, right? Or Tahara, because that was a minhag, right? That was a minhag of uh, the Moroccans as well, that we wouldn't call it Tazria Mitzora. It was called Tazria Tahara, right? That's the way it was called, and that was our minhag. That's what we used to do it. I know that a lot of people, they don't know that, right? But that was a minhag. So therefore, right. even on our bulletin, I wrote down, right? Uh, parashat Tazri Tahara, and then you have in brackets Mitzora or Mitzora and Tahara, but it's Tazria Tahara. So here it says like this Ticha, this introduction. Rabbi Yosef Omer, Rabbi Yosef says, Yehim Amon Chavercha Chaviv Alecha Keshelach, right? The money of your friend should be dear to you like your own money. And you have to fix yourself, point yourself to learn Torah because it's not a Yerusha for you. And all your actions should be Hashem Shamayim. So this is a Mishnah in Bikavot. So the question that we ask is, What is the connection between the money of your friend and learning Torah? Again, you're the money of your friend should be precious to you like your money. And prepare yourself to learn Torah. Why? But it's not a Yerusha for you. What's the connection? Yeah? So he says, with all them furthermore, right? What does that mean that it says, right? It's not a Yerusha for you. Right? What does that mean? So he says, right, what is that connection between Shehena and Masha Mavet? So it appears to me with Siyata Dishmaya, the Torah is many times compared to money. What does that mean? It says in Pasuk, what does that mean? If you're going to look for it like money, right, and you're going to look at it like a matmon, you're going to pursue it or you're going to seek for it. Like a matmon, matmon are like a different, different like hidden uh, jewels and things like that. So he says that's a pasuk mishle. So he says there, what are we referring to? To Torah. So you have to look, you have to run after Torah as if it's money. Money, you see people running all day after money, right? You see it all day. People are working from six o'clock until ten o'clock. People are running after good deals, right? Crypto, this, that. They want to make big money. They themselves, it could be the uh, no, no, tzedakah, uh, that you know, uh, but. Talk about, everyone wants to make money. Money, people are running after all day and all night. But he says, but it has to be like the Torah. The Torah is money. If you're going to look at, look, look for it. Like for money, for silver. Yeah, so he says, he says, right, Amar, and he also says, Tov Saharam Misichar Kesef. What does that mean? Right, what does that mean? Tov Saharam Misichar Kesef. He comes and he says, Right? It's actually better to do business with Torah than even the business of money because it's actually a better business deal. Okay? The Kaele Rabot, and many times like this, many Psukim like this. The Inyan who and the Inyan is like this. Just like a person comes and they're always looking at their money and they always want to make more money and more money. So to a person that's Osek but Torah and he's working on the Torah, He's going to start Chidushim. You know, we started the Kinyam Esech, and all of a sudden I hear these Balapatim coming with all these Chidushim, and this and that, and they're so, they're, they're on fire. Why? You learn Torah, right? You become on fire. You learn Torah, you'll start making good business deals. Don't worry about it. You'll start doing everything. That's why in the Torah, it's also written in the What's the Beracha for the Ashkenazim on Birkat Torah? La'asok b'tivre Torah. What is la'asok? Esek. What's an esek? Un negocio. Right? It's a business. A business. That's what it is. Why? Because that's what it is. Ah, if shar shiach shol. Right? But a person could come and think, Adam, kemo mamono. One second. Just like money. Im yiritzel anicho batavav lo esak bo, yashem batel. Shayu shalo. Listen. What happens if a person says, you know what? I've got millions. I don't want to start investing, doing things. What am I going to do? What I'm going to do is something very, very simple. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it there. Leave it on the in the bank. I'm going to be waiting. And I'll live by it little by little. So same thing. Torah. I'll just leave it on the side. Right? Leave it there. And that's it. He says, There's no din cheshbon. 
So maybe we'll be seeing things with the Mishra the Torah, with the Torah. He says, no. Im lo yirtze la'asok b'masao matan shel Torah. If you're not going to want to come and learn by b'masao matan of the Torah, l'ashai, right, you would say that you're allowed to. He says, right, the shelohi. You're allowed to leave it in the corner and not to do anything with it. He says, he says, no, that's a shote. It's a fool. Yeah? Why is it a fool? He comes and he says, Torah is Torah Hashem. The Torah is the Torah of Hashem. It was given to human beings in order to be a sec in the Torah. Right? Of the Torah. Right? He comes and he says, Yeah? Right? In order that a person should just pay attention right, to know what is exactly he's doing. Right? You know, like a pardes. Right? It's a business. Yeah, it's Mamasha business. Right? So he comes and he says, right? Just like a person is giving you a thousand dollars to start making money from. So you have to take from the reward half of it. So he says, Right? Uh, you can't just come and take your friend's money and put it inside. The same thing. If somebody gives you money to invest and you're not going to come, you're not going to invest. How are you going to do that? You have to, you have to invest. That's why the Torah says, right? It says in Mishlea again, What does that mean? The Torah is a lekach tov, right? You're not allowed to abandon the Torah. Right? Do not abandon the Torah. So it's the Torah is a lekach tov. I gave it over to you, but it's still mine. It's still my money. And therefore, al don't abandon the Torah. You're not allowed to just come and do your own business and just leave the money there. Say, no, 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 I'm good. If somebody gives you money to invest, you have to invest. You can't just leave it on the side and invest your money and not his. <clears throat> yeah? So he says, it's not your money. Right? 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 You have to continue doing the maximum. Okay? And that's why it says, Right? The mammon of your friend, which is like an essay, right? which is like a business that he's giving you money to invest. Should be so precious to you. So you have to make sure that it's not batel, just like yours. You can't just come and hide it and hide the money. Right? So imagine somebody comes and he says, listen, David, I want you to come and I'm going to give you money to invest. I give you the money and all of a sudden I come back after a month, two months, after a year, two years. I say, no, what? No, I just put it there in the box. I put it in the box. I give you money to invest. You have to invest. What are you putting in a box? So same thing. So you have to be careful also the Mamon Ruchani, which is the Torah Kdusha, which is given to you. You have to be matkin at Snechal in Motora. Don't stand, leave it in a Keren Zavi. Don't just leave it in the corner there and just wait. Okay, you're right. Of course, who gave it to you and everything that you want. Right? But it's not a Yerusha for you. What does that mean? It still belongs to Hashem. The Torah Tashem Nikret, because it's still considered Torah Tashem even after it was given to Israel. So the owners of the Torah, which is Hashem, he wants you to start working in the Torah, start learning, to start saying Chidushet Torah, start going. Everything should be Shemaim. Not just time to get money, right? Fine. So now he says, Umima. That's what he said. Why does it say Leshem Shamayim? Right? Because it said over there, Bechol Maasecha Yu Leshem Shamayim. Why Leshem Shamayim? Yu Lashamayim. What is Leshem Shamayim? What is the name of the Shamayim? What does that mean exactly? So he says, Hainu ki Adam be'esek ha-Torah tzrich li'achet Shem Avaya v'Shem Adunut. When you learn Torah, you have to be mi'achet the names of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Adunut. That's Amunai, right? Alev Dal Nun Yod. And also the name of Yud Ke Vavke. Right, you have to do both. Right, but it says, and that's why it says in the Gemara, What does it mean? That means the ones which are taking the you're going to be motzi, the name of Hashem with your mouth. It means even if it's going to be Yud Kevavke, we don't say Yeho. You know, we don't say that. We actually say Amonai. Right, that's the way that we pronounce the name of Hashem. Hashem Hashem, right, Nikra Nartik the Shem Aviyah. The Shem Avadnut, Avala Dalad Nun Yod, is an Nartik, is like going to be like the cover of the Yud Kevavke. Yadu and it's known. Right? It's known as a Shem Sefati Dach. Hosh Baruch I'm opening up my mouth. That Torah Tzma is Bechinat Shem Avaya. Yud Kevavke. 
לכך, therefore, צריך שיוציאם בפה. You have to take it out through your mouth. ולזה סיים, and that's why it says, אופי יגיתי לתך. מה זה אופי? שהוא בחינת שם אדנות, יגיתי לתך, זה תורה. שהוא סוד, right? שם הוויה. ושזה י"ק ו"ק. ולכן, ולכן, אם האדם מוציא דברי תורה מפיו ממש, if a person is going to come and he's going to be מוציא דברי תורה from his mouth, right? הנה בזה עושה חיבור שם הוויה בין התיק, הוא כלי שלו, שהוא שם אדנות. So he comes and he's making a חיבור with a י"ק ו"ק, and the adnut, you'd give, right, and the adnut. I'll have done a nudial. Yeah, it's like, an artik is like a sheath. You know, when you put, or an artik, an artik is like a, 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 a you know, you, you have the first, knife first. first, it's, like first, a, first. Thing, it's called a sheath, right? Uh-huh. A cover, a cover. So he comes and he says like this. Ve'lezeh amar chayim yem mo'otzeim bepeh. Yadua ki shamayim, kilu l'shem avaya. When you say yud kevavke, yud kevavke is shamayim. Right, but that's what it's called, Shamaim. Tevat Shem, who kinun la'adnut. So when I say Shem, it's, it's adnut, alav dalun yod, which is called Shem besol, v'yas david Shem. V'lezeh amar, and therefore it says, v'chul ma'asecha, you write yul l'shem Shamaim, right? Shetitchaber b'chinat Shem, m'chinat Shamaim. So you should connect Shem, Shamaim. Shem, right, is alav dalun yod. Shamaim is yud ke vav ke, shebeze yu chibur or primi, shu Shem avaya betoch akli, shu Shem adnut. So for the, new, the name of Yud Kevavke is going to be inside of Adnut. Okay, and that's how you're doing that. So that, that's why we say, Chol Maasecha Yu L'Shem Shamayim, for Yud Kevavke and Adnut. Okay? Velachem, right? And therefore, okay? Kol Kedusha Sheyesh Lemala, right? Any Kedusha that we have above, Mukhrach Sheyesh Ba Bechinat Or Primim Bechinat Kelim, Bechol Ono Chol Esfilot Yusedim, right? Vasuyim Bechach Sheyem Bechinat Kelim Bechinat Oro Shebetucham. ואין עולם ואין צפירה למעלה שהם מבחינה כלים מבחינות אורו פנימי. So again, now he's getting more into cluster concepts that everything is to do with that there's lights above and there's energy and things like that all above in the Shemaim to do with the, what we're talking about over here. והנה ידוע, so it's known, right? שהתורה נקראת מים, right? The Torah is called מים, right? We say that the Torah is our, right? The Torah is water. So he says, והיא המתארת את האדם ודוחה מעליו כל מין טומאה. So this is actually going to come and it's going to purify a human being and it's going to push off of him any type of tumah. Well, makes sense. Water washes off dirt. So the same thing, the Torah is going to wash off any type of tumah. And therefore, just like the Torah is called mine, right, which is chayim la'adam al-yidei ta'ara shem ta'arato. Sichal yo bepeh, it has to be in the water, in the mouth. Ka'asher amanu, just we mentioned, te'minset ta'ara na'asib b'mayim shem toch ha'kli. So therefore, the Torah is going to be done through the water which is inside of the utensil, which is the mouth. Kemo shenemar, chayim hen lo matziyem bepeh. But it's coming to the mouth. Kitarat yadav shel adam amayim agashvim was when you're going to come and pour water on your hands. Tzichim amayim liyo betochli. How do you do it? You need a keli. And when you do netilat adam for suda or netilat or netilat adam shachrit, you need a keli. So therefore, you need it. Or is any tadim adam? Shem zed tiyet tarat adam amayim agashvim kemo tarat adam amayim achurim. She tzichim liyo bekli shu ape. So too, the mouth is a utensil, and the mouth is a utensil that we're talking about, right? That we're actually taking out. So he says, she has a dumat, right, a dusha shel mala, she akol asui b'chinat kelim u'chinat oro shebetucham. Ve'u besod chibu shem avaya, shu'o pnimi b'shem adnut, shu'o sod akli b'netik shelo. Ve'lachach, and therefore the kli shenotim bo nikra b'tivre chazal, right, here it says it's antal. What is an antal? It says shu'o mispar chibu avaya, right, ala dal nuniyot. Which means the kli is the same numerical value of yud kevav ke'en adnut. Yud kevav ke is 26. How much is adnut? 65. 65 and 26, 91, 91 right? So 91. So therefore, the numerical value, right, of, uh, what else is the numerical value of 91, by the way? Amen. Amen is 91, yeah? So he comes over here and he says, like this, he says that the antal, which is the kli of Netilat Edaim, is also the gematria of 91. Why? He says, because at the end of the day, Right, this is also in the rabbinu. Okay, right, he comes and he says, um, right, he says like this. He says, right, there it's actually ninety antal, but he, he says in the footnote that it's maybe ninety-one with the kolel, or if he wants, it's just ninety and ninety-one is also the var. It's the same thing. Okay, fine. So he says, "Vechem mefurash besidur rabbinu arashash zal." There's also mefurash in the words of the rashash, right, where it says the kavana shel antal. And he comes and he says the kavana of antal. He says his mispash neshemot and iskarim is the two names right together. Okay, fine.
This is all the introduction. Now we're starting. Okay? Halakha Aleph. Aleph says, right? Hine, Amru Razal, En Notlim Le'edayim El Mekri. When you're going to do Netilat Edayim, so now you understand why we are getting into Yilchot Netilat Edayim. Because he got into the entire concept of the 91, and the purification, and the Torah is a purification. So now he goes into Yilchot Netilat Edayim. So he says like this, Amru Razal, En Notlim Le'edayim El Mekri. You could only do Netilat Edayim with a Keli, with a utensil. It's just like azat mechatat, which means just like the azat mechatat or the kiddush adam raglam in the bet amidash, which was you're basically coming, you're you're cleaning the the hands and feet in the bet amidash or the service of the bet amidash. It had to be done through a keli. It was done through the kior vekano. And here also, yeah, and the kiddush adam raglam in the mamas the kior. And it's written v'nachzu mimenu, right? Umechatat. It's written v'natru alam ma'im chayim el keli. So it has to have a keli. Amru razal. So the rabbis say kol akelim kshirim. Right? All the kelim are going to be kosher. Whether we're talking about kli avanim, kli adama, shena chashvim, kli lim, yan tuma, but they're also kosher over here. We watched you as as long as you could put liquids inside of it. Okay, so as long as it could receive liquids, it's going to be okay. Right? So he comes and he says, okay, aval kuvain, shem levadim, afilu kashim, afilu meor, shechulim, kabe mashka, psulin, and tilat adayim, kem nechulim, de enam kelim gemurin, nishtamesh pan. They're not real utensils. And anything which is not a real utensil, even if you could put water inside of it, it's not going to be kosher for netilat adayim. If you don't have another keli, so Maran said that you could do it, but you don't make a berachah for netilat adayim. The tov sheikroch yada b'mapa achar sheitol sheitol bekeli melu yochal biod yadav tuchim b'mapa vayim mishvatzot zav achorim. So basically, even if you are going to do netilat adayim with one of these utensils, which is not really a, t- a keli, he still says it's better to take your hands, put a mapa on it, right? Which means you're putting, let's say, a tissue, whatever it is, around your hands. And then you're eating the bread with the tissue, which means your hands are not actually touching the bread, right? Why was you doing it without netilat edayim? It's, it's a netilat edayim, but it's not a good netilat edayim. That's why you're not doing a bracha on it. And that's why he's saying that, you know, if you have to do this, this is what you're supposed to do. Okay? Gam kisuya kelim. Also, there's halacha betna. Also, the kisuya kelim. Kevan she'en atchalat asiyatan kedel lekabel. Since, right, at the beginning when they were made, they weren't made to be mekabel. En notli mehem. Right? You do not, right, do it. Which means this. I have a, a cover of a utensil, right? Now, I could technically put liquid there. I could put liquid, especially if it's like, you know, one of these covers. I could put liquid, right? And then I could come and I could pour it right on top of my hands. It says, no. Since the kisuya kelim, the covers of pots or the covers of utensils were not made to put liquids inside of it, so therefore we don't do netilat edayim from them. Okay? Halakha gimen. Tzarik shiyeh akli machzik revi'it. Right? It has to be that it's going to have a revi'it. Okay, what does that mean? It says over here like this, if it's not going to have a revit, right? you're not going to have, right, for it, for your hands. You're not going to do netilat edayim. It means if you want to do netilat edayim, you have to have a kli, which holds a revit. If it does not hold a revit, right, nothing. Okay? You're going to fill it up two or three times. And you're going to keep on, no, you need the revit in one time in the cup. Right? Very important. Revit in one time in the cup. Okay? Fine. Says now, Dalit. Lo ye clean a kuv, right? The utensil cannot have any holes. Now there's two types of holes. One hole is called mutsi mashke, and the next one is called kones mashke. So mutsi mashke means that the hole is big enough that liquids can come out. The second one is big enough that liquids can come in, right? Kones mashke. So he says that if you put it inside water, the water will come in through that hole. Now this hole is a little bit bigger than mutsi mashke. Because Motsi Mashke, all you need is a little tiny, um, a little tiny hole, and liquids will start coming out. But for liquids to come in, the hole has to be bigger. Okay? Vine, and behold, im nikev nekev shu kones mashke. If you made a hole, which is going to be a kones mashke, so he says, even if it's going to hold, arvid below, and not slim in Means like this you have a utensil, a keli. Right? You have a keli. So now, if you have a keli, right, and on the bottom, right, you have a revit, the hole is above, meaning above this, you do not have it. So he says, in such a case, he comes and he says, it's still, you're not allowed to do a tilat adayim. Because since you have a nekev kazeh, it's batel mitura kli. It's batel, meaning like this. Again, you have the utensil. Okay. Okay. What are we talking about? There are two holes. Kones mashke and motzi mashke. If it was going to be kones mashke, which means a bigger hole, that the liquid could come in. So even if the kli is machzik revit, let's say the hole is right here. It's up here. 
But here to here, it has a revit. Still, it's going to be patsul. Why? But tell me to rakli. Means even though here I have a revit, doesn't matter. The hole is only here. Doesn't matter. It's not a utensil anymore. Well, so therefore, to no, only to, to come in, just to come in, which is a bigger hole. Okay. Avalim nekevu katan that it's only motzi mashke. If you have revit from the nekevul mata, you could do netilat daim from it. And if not, then you don't do netilat daim. However, though, if you have another utensil, even if it's going to be machzik revit, right, you shouldn't do it lechatchila. Because obviously, if you have another utensil, don't do it lechatchila. Okay, fine. Says the halacha. Hey, yes, shomrim. Some people say the lo chilku, right? That they did not make a differentiation between kones mashke and motzi mashke. They didn't make a differentiation between kones mashke and motzi mashke. Kones mashke is to bring in liquid. Motzi mashke is to take out liquid. Ela benikuv only with a hole. Avalim nistach, but if it's a crack, even though it's not motzi mashke, you don't do it to the other end. Because a crack is worse than a hole. Uh, even though some people argue and they say there's no difference, we should be choshesh to the machminim. And only in Mishat Adacha, Kish Tzmochel Mekiyin, Avali Yevarech B'Shem Malchut, Ela Yenarhe Shem Malchut Bilibo, you should think about it in your heart. And look in the Chayadam and other Acharonim. Okay? So now Alacha, hey, says like this. Some people say that there's no difference. We just actually mentioned, hey, it was the, no difference between Kones Mashke and, and Moti Mashke only to do with the hole, but not to do with Nistak. Nistak means that there was a crack. However, though we hold that we have to be Machmin, and therefore we do it without a Beracha. Halacha Vav. Kol Nekev O Sedek. Shamayim Yotzi Mimenu Tipa Achar Tipa. Tchufim Zachar Zeh. When you have any type of a crack or a hole where water is coming out drop by drop. Tipa Veo Tipa Veo Tipa Veo Tipa Yeah? So he says, Sedek is a crack, yeah? Because so he says, any type of a hole or a crack where the drops are coming out one after another, that's for sure, it's going to be pasul for everybody. If it doesn't go one drop after another, so then you have to check it, whether it's going to be kones mashke or not. Yeah? It says here, kad kum kum, ibrik. It says, kad kum kum, bal kanesh shvicha. Yeah? He says, the minag bashu beretz atzavi, to Turkey, he told me men. So the minag in Eretz Yisrael and Turkey, is to do the netilat edayim with it. But the gaon achida brings down the machzik berecha, v'chem minag bashu, but also in Baghdad. Yae. Ach, yesh machminim, lomar, but some people are machminim to say, right? Yishim piya kane, gavoa mi piya racha, but if you have the Pia Kane, which is wider than Pia Rachav, so therefore, she told the Rachav, you have to do it always on the white side. And you have to be careful, right? Look also on the Chesel Alafim, or better than the Rachunim. Also, you should know, Kikol Kli Brik Shenechoshet, anything which is made out of copper, which is found here in, in Baghdad, it should be higher up. Kam Odia Shafred and Shachez is also another difference. Shepiotav Shani Shem Yishanim Beigul. It's going to be round. <laughs> that they don't make anything if that's sticking out in order to pour from it. But if it's going to be out of copper, so they do make on, on top of it like something which is bullet, something which is sticking out in order to pour from there. So which is basically that for sure you have to be careful because there it doesn't have a deen of the kli. That it's not going to be mashkin. So therefore there you have to be very, very, very careful. Okay, the Apple Gav this the Alzeya Shulkin said they hold that you're allowed to do it from there also as well. Look at the Mati Yudah and other Achronim, and also the Gamachzik Yudah, right? The Machzik Beracha, sorry, the Rav Chida. That was a Minak Pashut, Chen Israel El Mikom Kom Yiresh Shemayim. You should also suspect from this, and you shouldn't do it. You should do it from the Pi Arachav, which is Yashar. Okay, why? Because it's Machzik Machshkin. Nevertheless, you're not going to rebuke somebody right, that he's going to do it from that place, right? Fine. Halacha Chet. So what happens now, he says, he says, be careful that the top part does not have a place where it could actually hold liquids. Because if he has like a, a border, that, that border could hold liquids, it's going to be a problem. Another thing is what happens if it broke? So if it broke, you should pour from a place where it broke, right, which is going to be like a lower part. So here, again, you have here a broken part. So you would do it from here, so it's the lowest part in the utensil. Okay? Kli, nechoshet, shenikev. When you have a utensil of copper that has a hole, em lo stima b'shava, it doesn't help that you're going to plug it up with, um, you say shatat b'shava, uh, with, uh, not clay, um, 
uh, wax, right? It doesn't shava, right? Velo betit, and not with clay, velo bezefet, and not with tar, velo bedevik, and not with a paste or a, or a glue, shekulim barvi gigi, right? So he says, velo bemas shekulim king, chol goy zamzeh, la tzarish yisimenu bebedil, to make it out of iron, right? Uh, plum. So he says, he says here, right? Vioilo, and it's going to help. It's not going to help stima chalasit. The tita muilo azev v'dele. And therefore, here we have to be very careful right, that when you're going to purchase, right? When you're going to purchase uh, ibrik, yeah, So therefore, he says that's the, what's the halacha is over here. Fine. Halacha yod. Right? He says, don't fill up your palms with water. Right, and then you're going to pour it over. Okay, he says why? He says she not only makes clay, but it only helps from a clay. Also, don't put it in one hand and then pour it onto the other hand. Pour on one gavit on one shot. So therefore, but since the one hand already is good, so then it would help to do it on the second hand. But nevertheless, you have to be machmi like zaradi shnad. It is always going to be pasul. You have to do it from the beginning. Yeah, if you put your hands inside of a clay of water, and now you come and you rinse your hands in them, it does not help. Why? Because since it's going to be inside, it's not netila. It's like a tvila. And tvila is shuvin. Now, there's no tvila in mine shuvin. Shuvin is drawn water, water that was drawn. So it has to be that there's only going to be, right, in water which is. Not draw. If it's not a kaka, but if it's not a kaka, it's not a kaka, it's a kaka, it's a kaka, and then there are some people that actually permit it. Because they hold, right, that what? That she notel yada mitoch a kli, be machnis yada mitoch a kli, everything's called natila be kli, and some people prohibit it. So therefore, b'shat adachak, if you don't have a kli, you told me, you should knock on a kilin, but you should do it without a berachav, natila tadaim, or you could think about it in your mind, and also you should put your hands with a mapa. Okay? Okay, next. You'd bet. Yeah, you'd bet. Me, Shen Lo Kli. Somebody that does not have utensil. You can put your hands inside of a nahar, of a river or a mikveh that has 40 se'a, which is kosher for tilat nashim, or in a mayan, in a spring, even though it doesn't have arba yim seda, right? As long as your hands are going to be covered in one shot, and you make al the tilat adayim. Okay, now, even though, Minadin, you should have done it once, right? And you don't need to dry your hands. Nevertheless, you should dip your hands three times and you should wipe them, you know, you should wipe them together because there's a sod and then you move anyway, you do it because of cleanliness. So you should always dry your hands. Yeah. That which we said that it's going to be permitted. So you would say different. Uh, yes, usually, but he says no. Here he says only nitilat yadah. Yeah? Instead of al tevilat yeah. Right? So here it says, that which we said over here, that you're going to be permitted to put your hands in the river. It's only going to be big rivers, which are coming on their own from mountains, like the Chirek, El Prat, from Napar Par, Narot, the Mesek, Reuzimem. But the people that make them in the fields, in the fields, they come and they make like irrigation canals. Yeah? <coughs> yeah, you wouldn't be not. Yeah, they make irrigation canals. They make like little tiny things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, yeah? Like that, yeah? Like that, yeah? Like that, yeah? Yeah, so he says, so therefore he comes and he says, Baale Asadot and things like that. Right, that they're going to come and draw waters from the Mayan through the, you know these different things. So he says in those places it's a sur to do tefilatidaim because even though it has forty sea and even more because they're very very long, but they don't have the le- the depth. Okay, and also it's considered mine shulim right that they continued it going because the the the, lead, the bucket which they're coming and they're picking it up. He says it's con- it's going to be considered pasul, <clears throat> so if it doesn't help. If you did tefilatidaim right in this place. Even though some people permit because nitzoch hibur, which means there's a connection. It's going from the brecha to the mayan, from the springs to this river, to this like little stream. Because since um, some people say nitzoch and hibur, we're not going to rely on it. Nevertheless, some people are going to actually uh, say this. They're going to do it. He says if it's going to have forty se'a, you have to be careful, right, to put your hands. Uh, in the bottom, I'm not sure the bottom of the of this type of like this river, okay? But he says, but in the top part, right? It's not going to be good. Only if it's going to be on the bottom part, it's going to be okay. See if you give me, okay? Im natal yado achat v'taval yado achat. What happens if you did nitilat yadaim on one hand and tevilat yadaim on the other one? 
Okay? So he says, So you're going to make the bracha. If you have a maka, that you can't put water on that hand. So, and therefore he says, you make al and you're not going to make al natilat yad, just like it's brought down in Rav That means even though you're only doing natilat adayim on one hand, and the other one tevila, or you're doing natilat adayim on one hand because the other one you have a cast or whatever it is and you can't do it, doesn't matter, you're going to make al natilat yadayim, hands in plural and not yad. Okay? Hamayin, you dalit. Hamayin tzichim lavol yadayim mekoach gavra. Right? It has to come to your hand mekoach gavra. Min bao mealehem. So it comes on their own, right? Lo chashuv and etila. It's not considered an etila. Ve'lachen and therefore kli shekorvim ba'arvi mezambala, right? There's a beres, right? That is basically the faucet, yeah, the faucet. Sheish lo bar zasviyah kerosh tanegol lechoshet shemisavivin otol letzad echav yotzim ma'im. Sedich al notayin yodam imenu liyopotel achesotem kama pamim. You have to open and close a few times. You understand? You're opening, closing, opening, closing, opening, closing many times. Right? She'im lo yasekem is if you're not allowed, if you're not going to do that, the kiluah harishon is only koach kavra. Everything else is not koach kavra, and therefore it's going to be a problem. Okay? It's not koach kavra. Koach kavra means that's come from your strength. When you open up, right, the first gush, the first, you know, drops of water, that comes from your koach. But now the rest of it is not your koach anymore. You just open up a faucet, and now it just continues coming out. You don't need the koach kavra. What? You're not allowed to do netilat adayim from a child that has less than six years old. You need kavana. And a katan that's less than six years old is like a kof. He's like a monkey that doesn't have any understandings. That is brought down in the Achalonim. Why? Because I know a lot of people that are even more than six years old than they're coughing. Yeah, they're coughing. 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 Or his wife, if they're nidot. Careful with this, yeah? Not from his wife or daughter when they're nidot. Afilu o misha acheret. Or from another woman. Afilu en anida. Even if she's not anida. So, gam ken. Yeah? So, no. Gam ken lo yitom. Arishon bayin muta. Aval im anokhli o anida. Evi omayim ekli vunu te batzum. But what happens if they brought in the water? And he does netilat to them himself. Shari, it's going to be permitted. Vanizhar gam bazet tavo alav bracha, and the one that's careful in this, he should also be careful in that. Which means that you should never get right the nida right to bring him the water. Doesn't matter whether even if it's going to be his wife or the daughter. Okay. Next. Tetzain yes shiva mashkin shena mekablim tumah. You're right. You're right. Seven. There's seven mashkin. Which are mechabim to ma shelo bechshet. There's seven mashkin, right? There's seven mashkin, right? There's seven types of liquids which are for the netilat edayim. Okay, and they are wine, chometz is part of wine, meaning vinegar. Ashni is dvash tevonim. We're talking about a dvash which is comes from the bees. Okay, dvash tevonim. Right after it was separated, you have the shemen zayit which is olive oil. Right, you've got chalav and mechalav which is milk and mechalav. Hamishi is going to be do tal yad shachadam. Hashishi, the sixth one is going to be dam be'emach hayav of blood of an animal, domesticated animal, wild animal, or a bird. Hashvi is going to be ma'im water. The simanam yad shachadam. Aval shal me perot, but other types of fruit juices. Kido asim mashkim l'shtiyim is going to be made of mashkim. Em mekabim tumah blo chesed. It's not going to be mekabim tumah without chesed. Elachen and therefore, I'll tell you about shadibul mashkim. Somebody is going to eat something which you dip it in a in a in a liquid. Okay. Davar shadibul be mashkim. So he says over here. It fell on top of a, of a food. And it's still going to be uh, moist. Even though the ochel is not in the ochel, even though the ochel is not in the ochel, you have to do the netila to them beforehand. But you don't have to do the netila to them beforehand. They didn't make a bracha, only if you're going to eat bread. Now, even though the, the blood is a surba achila, right? we, we brought it with the seven mashkim because of the person that's eating it, let's say for the flour, for sakana. Right, so he says, but blood of fish is not considered a mashke, and therefore, if you're going to eat fish with its blood, there's no problem, and there's no you don't need to do netilat tadaim. So the blood of a fish is not a mashke, and it's not blood. 
because there's only the blood which is permitted is uh, so because of that you would be able to eat it without any type of nitilat dime whatsoever now the other ones though let's say a person had a sakana and or it's a refla that he has to have blood so if he could have the blood but he would have to do the nitilat dime because of the davar in the blood halakha yudzain even if you're going to eat less than a of the things which you're going to eat, which you're supposed to do, and the raya is the night of Pesach. The night of Pesach, purposely we eat by the karpas, we purposely going to eat less than a kezait. Why? So the problem of Berachachra. But even though you're going to eat less than a kezait, right, you still do netilatidaim for the karpas. Right, right. That is, even though you're going to eat less than a kezait of the karpas, but you're still going to do why the vashat v'lo mamashke. So therefore, that's a proof that means even though you're going to eat less than a kezait, you're still going to do netilat daim mudar bracha. Okay. V'im kozeh chayav li toli daim shunti v'lo mamashke as brought down to be ke yosef the rav chida. Does it have ketchup written there? No. Yeah. Kol mashke. Any type of liquid that has enough liquid that if you would touch it, you would be able to make something else moist. That's called in Chazal, right? that it's wet enough that you could touch it and then you could wet something else. He says that is it's a little bit So you need it and you're going to eat it. For example, you went and you, you soak something in water or you wash something in water. Right, you need Some people are going to be lenient that if you're going to eat it with a cuff, with a spoon, or whatever it is, so you could do it without Nitila to dime. And you could be with Samech on the Makilim when it's difficult. For me, nevertheless, nevertheless, if you're just going to give a Minikacha, which is like a type of a, you know, like one of these, um, uh, um, you know, like one of these liquids, whatever, but it's not, it's a little bit thicker. So he says, and you're going to give it with a mazleg, you're going to give it with a, with a fork and not a spoon, so you could be matid even meshofi. You're not going to take it without it with your hand. So therefore, you know, you have to eat it like that. Raya, and the proof is, they're not going to bring you without a mazleg. Nevertheless, the majority is water, or mechza, next or half half. But if it's going to be sugar and fruits, which are more than the water, Right, so answer the netila. You do not need netila today. You tet mashke, right? Me amashkim and iskirim shum mevushal. Any liquid which is already cooked, mutal itabe b'tochol lechem. You're allowed to dip the bread in it, and you could eat it without netila today. Why? Because the mashke, once it's going to be cooked, and you don't touch it, I mean, gomim tubal, right? So therefore, there's no problems. The chen tzirik lizer just don't touch exactly where you dipped it. Just like bratan neve shalom. That which is not here. No, that's what he's saying. You don't need to. You don't need to do it. That's what he's saying. You can eat it without. Netilat yadaim, as he says here, you're patur midin netilat midin tibulo b'mashke. But that's if you're eating less than a kazait, obviously. Because if you're eating more than a kazait, then you need it because of the bread. I hear you talking about you're eating less than a kazait of bread. So if you're eating less than a kazait of bread, right, you would not need it. Okay. Umashe ochiach agon achida. That which agon achida comes and he says the ones that are going to be dipped their bread in their cafe and then they eat it without netilat yadaim is because they're touching it in their hands. And if you're going to drink from these liquids, so then again you don't need netilat yadaim. But tovelet zvo motzet. So chenosh shutemaim. If you're going to drink. The water, you're going to eat, drink it, or whatever it is, and you're, you're dipping your finger, and then you're going to drink it, but they hold that they didn't do netilat adayim for mashkin, meaning only when you're dipping a food into a liquid, but not into liquids by itself. And even though smoch, if you can, you should try to be machmin. Kaf, the last halacha is, kaf is the last halacha, chema. What is chema? Imi, right, krusha. Right, if it's going to be karush, karush is like a congealed, it's going to be like more thick. So therefore, eno mashke, it's not considered a mashke, it's considered a food. But if it's going to be like a more liquidy, so therefore it's going to be a mashke, it's going to be a mashke, it's going to be a mashke, right? It's going to be a mitwa, it's going to be a mitwa, it's going to have like, you know, like whiskey or all these things. Eno mashke, it's not a mashke, but that's only going to be zea be'alma. That's sli, a roast. Shamuel tofecha, love that you, on top of the roast, you have the liquid. So he says, some people say you need it to the dime, some people say you don't need it to the dime, and you could be mak, me somech on the matini.